Hi YouTube, I am here today to review science curriculum for you um, and we are going to be looking at the God's Design for Life series and this is one that I know a lot of you have asked about. There's not a lot of reviews to kind of see what's in it um, so I'm going to try and do a couple of things with this review. I want to tell you a little bit about the curriculum and what you can expect, um, what its intended purpose is, how we are using it, and then I'm going to turn the camera around and actually show you what the inside of the books looks like. So hopefully that will cover all of your bases. If you have questions that I don't get to in this video, please leave me a comment down below and I will try and respond to get your questions answered. So like I said, this series is from Answers in Genesis and um, it's called the God's Design for Science series. And it's a four year series and it's geared for third through eighth grade. Um, each year then has six books, three student texts that are gonna look like this, and then three accompanying teacher's guides. And I'll show you the insides of these here in a little bit. Um, so we started with the God's Design for Life, which covers plants, animals, and the human body. Um, there's another one that is I'm not going to remember them all now that I'm going to try and tell you. Um, God's Design for Heaven and Earth, which covers weather, space, the earth itself. Then there's one that's focused more on chemistry and one that's focused more on physics. So those are your four years um, of science. And then each year is broken down into three books. In total, for each year, there's 105 lessons. Um, so we do science two to three days a week, depending on... Um, kind of how it lays out and I just kind of went through the indexes and kind of split them so that our weeks would split evenly or whatever. Um, but there's 105 lessons contained in in the three books for each year. The series was redone um, and updated a couple years ago, I think in 2016. I think the, this just came out last year. So you might see them that look a little bit different. They have different pictures on the front um, if you're looking at an older version. So this is the current um, fourth edition. We chose this program, um, this science program, because we wanted to give our kids obviously a biblical worldview is our number one reason for homeschooling, first of all. Um, and so for science, that was super important. If you're purchasing curriculum from Answers in Genesis, for science especially, you can count on it being a young earth creationist view. Um, it's a literal six days of creation. It's going to follow the account of Genesis and you are going to move through kind of that chronology and with that perspective. So it's really important with science curriculum to know what you're looking for. Um, if you're not familiar with Answers in Genesis, they have tons of information on their website. They have a lot of really great resources just in general. They are the owner and operator of the Creation Museum and the Ark, if you've seen the commercials and thanks for that in Kentucky. We took our kids to the Creation Museum a couple years ago and it was excellent. They were pretty young and they still really enjoyed it. So anyway, that's my plug for them, but that's who Answers in Genesis is and that's the kind of curriculum you can expect to get from them. So that was a big factor in us for choosing it. So that's a little bit of the background on it. This curriculum is designed for third through eighth grade. When we look through, I'll show you in each section, there's kind of a regular to-do section and then there's a challenge section. And that challenge is designed for sixth, seventh, and eighth graders just to kind of take that to the next level. So this is something that you can definitely use with all of your elementary and junior high aged kids. That's its intended purpose. Um, my oldest is a first grader. So we're obviously using it before it was intended to be used for, um, but my kids really enjoy it. Even my preschooler really likes it. Um, and I wanted them to go through the whole curriculum, the whole four year cycle twice. So obviously we'll do first, second, third, fourth grade, and then fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, they'll repeat. So they'll be able to do just the introductory section. And then the second time through, they'll do the challenge section. And then whatever little kids I have can follow along at their level. So for me, it's very multi-grade and it has worked really well. Um, and looking at the information on the website, I've seen mention of an early elementary guide to be able to use it specifically with younger kids. I've not actually seen that anywhere in print yet. 
Um, so if you know of that and I'm missing it, please let me know because I would like to have that too. But we are using it um, at a first grade, first grade level and we're just taking it really slow um, and I don't have really high expectations for my kids. I just want them to have kind of some of the basic information. So we've done it a little bit differently this year than I intended. Like I said, at the beginning of the year, I went through and kind of laid it all out. Um, we took a break from science during the middle of the year when I was dealing with morning sickness and could only do the bare minimum. Um, this is something that kind of went by the wayside along with history. Um, so now we're picking back up and kind of just trying to catch up to the end of the year. So it's worked good in that respect. Um, so that's kind of a basic overview of what you can expect. If you get this whole three book set, which is one year of science, 105 lessons, this set retails on Answers in Genesis website for $89.99. So it's $90 for your science curriculum for the year. Um, that includes your three teacher's guides as well. You can buy these books separately. So if you just want to do animals, you can buy animals and it comes with a teacher's guide separately. Um, but I know we're going to go through and do the whole set. So we buy the set every year. Looking on their website, I've seen a couple of different recommendations. They say you can really start wherever your kid has interest. Um, but they recommend, I think if you're going to start, especially with younger kids, to start with God's Design for Life, which is the plants, animals, human body one, or the God's Design for Heaven and Earth, and leave the chemistry and physics ones, maybe for the higher grades. So that's what we're doing. We'll do life this year, heaven and earth next year. Then I'll have to look and decide. Um, my son loves the physics part of it. Those books look really interesting to him. So I'm trying to decide when I'm going to let him do those because we talk about that plenty in our non-school life. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera around, show you a little bit about what's inside these books, and hopefully that will answer some of your questions. So bear with me just a second. Okay, so here we are on the other side of my table so that you can see the inside of these books. So on the left is the student textbook, what would be considered student textbook, and on the right over here is the teacher's guide. So I'm going to start with the student text, and you have three books. So here's animals, human body, and plants. And again, you can see on the cover that these are all the fourth edition. So if we look at animals. This whole book is all in color um, and there's lots of pictures and my kids really like the pictures and it's always a good discussion starter. Um, and to be honest with you right now, especially since we're just trying to catch up, um, I mostly just read to them each day and read what the information is um, and then we kind of talk about it. Sometimes if it's something that's really interesting to them, we'll find a YouTube video or another book that we have at home and read it, but we don't really do a whole lot above and beyond that. So this is a good lesson. Actually, I'm gonna just keep it open to this one so you can see how everything is laid out. So here at the beginning is some of the words to know. This would be like what you would expect your younger and mid elementary kids to know. Here's your challenge words for your junior hires. Then everybody is gonna read this introductory part there's some fun facts, some questions that are kind of always good for just general discussion, checking their knowledge at the end. Then here in the blue box, this is what's kind of designed for everybody. If I do a project with my little kids currently, I'm going to do something out of this. There's been a few experiments that we've done and that kind of thing, um, but this kind of gives me some ideas. This green section then is what would be considered the challenge section. And it always gives you a little bit more information. And so this is what you would expect then for your um, junior hires to do when they get a little bit older. So that's kind of how a general lesson is laid out. Some of them are a little bit longer. Um, there, that one's only two pages again. So here's the blue for everybody lesson. Here's the green for your challenge lesson. So it's laid out really simply. So here's one where they're building a model. So they obviously give you some more detail and then your challenge is on the other side. Um, my kids really like it. Like I said, we just read through it and it's really fun. And then we got just finished the lesson on arachnids 
And so there was a spider in our basement the other day and the kids are like, there's an arachnid down here. And whatever. And like, that's just what they get out of it. Um, and so we kind of talked about it and stuff, but it's fun for them even just at that early elementary level to read through. It's stuff that's relatable. It's easy to read. What I would expect when we go through it again um, is to have my older kids maybe read this out loud to a younger sibling so I know they're really getting the information instead of me just reading it to them and then maybe working through the elementary activity with a younger sibling and then doing the challenge activity on their own. That's kind of how I foresee this working, I guess maybe as my kids get a little bit older and I get multiple kids working through the program. Um, so that's kind of what the books look like. Let me show you the table of contents because that's what I always want to see. One more page here. So you can see there's units one and two in the first 13 lessons. And then on the next page, this goes through unit six. It tells you over here what you would expect your third through fifth graders to do, what you would expect your sixth through eighth graders to do. So this is the student workbook or student text. There is no writing that they're gonna do in this. So this is totally reusable and shareable between kids. If we open up, I'm gonna to switch to the text or the teacher's guide. I'm just gonna pull animal so it's the same one. This is the teacher supplement. This is all in black and white. And there is no real table of contents here. There is an introduction about why you would teach life science. They talk about their kind of worldview, how you would do it again. Um, they talk about creation versus evolution, if that's something that you're struggling with or struggling with how to teach. And then when you get into the actual lessons, see here's lesson one and two on two pages. So it's really short, just gives you some ideas, questions to ask, other things that you can do. Um, there are some suggestions for worksheets. All of the worksheets that are suggested in here come as a PDF download when you buy the curriculum. So you have access to those and you can print them for however many kids you want or need. So I've looked at a few of these and um, have taken some of the suggestions at the beginning of the year when we were doing it a lot more often. I kind of made activities every day, sometimes based on this information, sometimes I would just look through and see what I thought was more appropriate for an elementary kid. I'm gonna grab a couple of those activities and I'll show you a few of those things that I came up with. Okay, I pulled a couple of activities that I created on my own or found on Pinterest and printed on my own. So as I was reading through, like when we were studying plants, one of the things that we did was, um, or animals, sorry, was go through and talk about all the classes. So we talked about it for a couple of days and then these are different colors, printed in different colors, and my son cut them out and then we glued them on in order and this helped us remember the order that the classes went in. So that was like something I found on Pinterest that I did because I thought the upper elementary lesson was maybe a little bit more challenging than what I expected a first grader to do. Um, here's an example. One day I printed off the plant cell and they colored the parts as I was reading the lesson and then we kind of identified them um, as we were going through and just kind of verbally talked about them. Um, and then one day, move this here, we were talking about parts of the flower. So I printed off and then he had to put the flower in order, which hopefully ended up looking something like that. And then he matched up the words like that. Um, so again, things that were more kind of first grade appropriate, but I use the teacher's guide and then look through the book as kind of my basis. So I really think that this curriculum can be used probably kindergarten, first grade, up through eighth grade, especially if you're willing to kind of adjust for those lower grades. And then I think it would be perfect to do with a sibling if you have an older and a younger sibling. So it's something that we've been really happy with. Um, we feel like it was worth the money for us because again, science was something that was really important to us. And then to have the teacher's guide and the student text that I knew would be reusable with future kids. It was just important to us to have something with a biblical worldview that we knew was going to fall in line with our beliefs. So again, I hope that answers some of your questions and gives you a little glimpse into the curriculum. You can find it on the Answers in Genesis website. 
Um, if you have other questions about it, please leave me a comment and I will get back to you. Or if you want to see anything else, I can do another quick video. But I know a lot of you have been asking about it, so I really wanted to just get this up and going for you guys um, as you're starting to make curriculum decisions for next year because it's that time of year already. So thanks so much for watching. Happy homeschooling.